Hi guys, Jason Greystone here. And the reason for this video is because I wanted to give you access to the live room. I'm going to share with you a normal day in the live room from today. was not too much going on, um, but the reason I wanted to get this video out is because most people, when they think about trading, they think of this whole Wolf of Wall Street type ringing up your friend, man, I'm in a trade, get in, get out, you know, ringing up brokers, shouting across the room, uh, high intensity, uh, high impact, high frequency trading. And any professional trader will tell you that it's not like that. It is literally uh, about being consistent and showing up every day. You see, there is thousands and thousands of opportunities every day in the market. There's something, if I was to combine all of my pairs and all the opportunities on all of my pairs um, in a month, there'd be something like 20,000 opportunities, right? But what you want is an edge. And the way you get an edge is to add filter upon filter upon filter and that whittles that 20,000 opportunities down to around 20 or 30 high probability, high quality trading opportunities. Um, and the way that you get that edge is to come in and consistently trade a plan every single time you approach the markets. It's not about, um, you know, today something's good happening, so there's lots of trades going on. Well, there's not much going on today, so I'm not going to bother. You have to come in every day and approach the markets, clock in, clock out, do your analysis exactly the same way and maintain that consistency. Otherwise, you can't expect to generate consistent results. So I just want to give you a bit of an insight into today because you'll see lots and lots of videos on traders where they show you their winning trades only and they're going on about you know their big winning streaks and how many pips they've earned. I want to share with you a video where there's not too much going on and I'm going to share with you a few of the pairs out of my portfolio. We're going to go over them using that IPDE process um, and you'll see how robotic, monotonous and mundane the approach to the markets actually is, but it's just me showing up and doing my job as a trader. Um, if you want to generate consistent profits from the market, you must have a consistent approach and have the discipline to come in and be consistent regardless of whether you're in a in a winning streak a hot streak or a losing streak or a drawdown you just have to show up so enjoy the analysis take notes if you need to i go through very simply ipde from the daily charts right down to the daily uh, the day trading time frames a few trades setting up we actually got involved in a couple of trades today um but just enjoy it and uh, and i'll see you in a minute so we're looking at the uh, the Aussie CAD, and what we're seeing on the Aussie CAD is consolidation. This is the highest time frame. This is the daily time frame, and we are looking at consolidation. So as we do our IPDE, what do we do? We identify consolidation. What do we predict? Further consolidation, right? Further consolidation. There's no reason for me to believe that we're going to see any trend here yet until we either put in a new structure low, or we see a reversal and break out to the upside. For now, this is consolidation, so we predict further consolidation. Then we just have to decide how we get involved. Well, in ranging markets, I have strategies for that. I have um, advanced pattern formations that allow me to make money out of this consolidation zone in the form of bat formations, ciphers, gartleys. So all it is a case of is dropping down to my trading time frames and trying to identify them, because that is how I can decide to get involved. Now, there's nothing here at the moment. We had a uh, we had a violation of a of an A leg here for a bat pattern. You can see we had X A B, but then what we did is we broke and violated the A leg, which means that's now invalid. And then we just continue to consolidate up at this level. So what we're looking at is dropping down to our our, our other trading time frames, 60 minute time frames, another one of my swing trading time frames and consolidation breeds patterns. We see that we had a back pattern here. Um, sorry, let me just bring that on again. Swing high to swing low. X, A, B, C, D. Hit that 886 completion point at 98.74. Rolled straight over 
uh, and hit target ones and then the stops will roll to break even uh, for this okay syndicate was one in one out I think a kill put this into the syndicate because uh, I didn't but we um, a nice pain free trade it's about 18 pips 17 pips if you depend on what you front run and um, there's your first opportunity so now we're out of that um, if you're in target twos you're looking at target twos a little bit lower down at the 618 retracement so your target twos will actually be down at this level here okay so you haven't quite filled that yet but you would have if you are splitting your positions you would have rolled your stops to break even once you hit that first target and now you're in a risk-free trade to target two you can't lose any money on this trade now because the most you'll be stopped out at is break even on your second position so you'd still have the profits from the first position and uh that's it. So consolidation, we identify consolidation, we predict further consolidation. We know we have a high probability of spotting these advanced patterns in consolidation because that's where they form. They're a, a combination of retracements and extensions. We know they form very frequently in these areas. So it's our job to just identify them then. We can decide how we get involved using a BAT, Cypher, Gartley. Uh, maybe you trade uh, the channel. Um, and then once we've decided how we can get involved, it's just a case of waiting for those rules to be met and then executing the trade uh, just like this at the 886, rolled over, hit targets. Uh, and then we just wait for the next one. Same thing, we're just looking for consolidation patterns. Are there any more? Let's drop down to the day trading time frame. Um, looks like there's a little pattern in here as well. Another bat pattern, X, A, B, C, D down at 9841. Don't know if there's going to be enough profit in this. Yeah, there's going to be over 10 pips. So, uh, little pattern here. Stops would have to go below the X point, which means that's going to be down at a 113 inversion for me. 9841 would be the entry. Alright, so these are just remember, guys. Right, these are strategies for consolidation. You have to remember that the markets, the Forex markets in particular, are in some form of consolidation 70 to 80% of the time. They actually move sideways more than they, than they trend. All right? uh, that means that if the market's moving sideways, you've got, you know, and you just place a trade anywhere in that market at random, You've got a 50, if you have a stop loss below and a, and a target above, you've got a 50-50% chance of being right because it moves sideways. It's 50%, you know, 50% moving sideways. So these patterns are very powerful in the Forex market because it's such a consolidating market, uh, most of the pairs anyway. So it's very, very useful to have these patterns in your toolbox and um, and being able to adapt once markets in consolidation. And then when we break out into a trend, then we have another plan and rules of engagement into that. So this is what we'll be looking for. We'll keep an eye out on this. So the Aussie dollar on the daily time frame, we've seen this this level hold. Okay, we had the hold at this level, uh, 80-50 level, which just so happens to be previous structure support become resistance we pushed up we held that level and uh, just as we tested that level again we failed to break and close above we failed to put in a new high we had this nice high test candle wick bearish rejection here bear pressure here uh, we then pushed up tested again had a nice high test candle wick again and then we started to roll over and what we saw was we actually violated uh, this structure support level, pushing down, putting in a new low, and then putting in a new low. So from a trading perspective, on my trading time frame, what we're seeing is, uh, if my screen stops freezing, what we're seeing is this bearish move. Now the question is, how can we get involved? So we're predicting that we're, gonna, we're likely to uh, push down Next level of support here is down here at 75.78. Okay, so how can we get involved? So we've done the I, identify bearish, predict 
further movement to the downside, at least a retest of these lows, right? Decide how we can get involved. Well, we know that we need price action to push up into previous structure. We've got a nice little structure shelf here at that 7,700 uh, level, okay? And we're pushing up, we're, we've tested that level. Now what we can do is build out our rules of engagement into the trade here. Um, what I would need, there was also a, a Fib Inversion trade here for anyone that, that trades Fib Inversion. Looks like this, we had a 618 up at this level. Um, that would be a Fib Inversion trade up here. So there'd be an aggressive entry for you Fib Inversion traders. Stops would have to go above the high. And then uh, targets for me would be at a retest of the low. But if you're trading the the uh, if you're trading the conventional fib inversion, you'd have targets at the six one eight retracement. Okay, and then the the stop loss would be an equal well a half measured move of the target. So if that was your if this is your um your target, conventionally it's a half measures. It's a two two to one trade. So you, which works out quite nicely because your stop's just above that level that we're looking at, that structure level, so it's protective stop uh, positioning. And then you're looking for a retest of the, uh, of the uh, 618 retracement, and then maybe two target twos, if you trade two targets, then that, just that extra position down at a retest of the low. Um, for me, in the syndicate, I'll be trading a, a fib inversion, but looking for a retest of the lows. So you can see now, deciding how we can get involved, we need price action to push up into this zone here, trigger that 77.06 uh, level, and then aggressive short for retest of the lows. Now, if you're a bit more conservative, and you're building out confirmation in this zone, you can see we've got an equal measured move up there. All right? Just going to widen this up a bit. So if you're looking for a bit of confluence and a bit of uh, a few more filters, then you can see we've got an equal measured move. If we bring on our Fib extension tool, you're going to see that we've got um, a 127 extension up there as well, and a 1414. So if we just start narrowing down this kill zone of confluence, uh, you're going to see we've got a little kill zone there. Nice little kill zone, some fib confluence. We've got equal measured move. So even if you don't trade the fib inversion, but you use the fib cluster for confluence, then uh, you've got a nice little fib cluster in this zone. All right, so this is an area that I'm looking to uh, to short. I'm actually going to get this into the trade floor chat. So not much else I'm looking at on this pair, other than uh, from down on the trade on the day trading time frames up here on the. Um, up here, up here on the uh, on the on the lower time frame, you're going to see a Gartley pattern. So, 76.99 for a Gartley. You're going to have uh, stops being placed above X, which is going to be up here at 77.03. Very deep Gartley pattern, which means a great risk reward. And um, if price action pushes up, whether we know we've got a high probability trading opportunity waiting for us as there there as well. Uh, so there we have it. Aussie Gola, we've been through the, the swing trading time frames. We know what we're looking for. On the lower time frame, there's a couple of pattern trades here. Um, one uh, got bearish Gartley, deep bearish Gartley with a great risk reward. One bullish Gartley with a uh, just slightly under a one-to-one -one risk reward. So we'll be waiting for price action to push down a little bit lower just so we get a one-to-one -one fill. Uh, a couple of opportunities there for us on a day trading perspective. So now we just sit and wait and see if we can get involved. So we're now looking at the dollar, uh, the pound dollar cable, and um, so we're going to take the same approach. It's that IPDE. Well, we know that we've we know that we've recently violated um, significant levels of structure resistance. We we broke out of this consolidation zone that we were in for a very very long time, and we uh, we put in a new high. But what we did respect is this significant level here that was that was respected. Um, following the Brexit and actually when we jumped out to the monthly time frame you can see that I had some significance previously as well we actually held that level um, before on the monthly time frames 
So it has some significance to it. It has a, it's a respected level, and we saw a double top at that level, and we started to roll back over. Now, um, anyone looking to buy this up in this zone would have a, a bit of difficulty because we've just been consolidating, and there's been no real reason to enter this to give us a good uh, a good risk reward or or a very low risk trade. Um, so what we've been looking at since since we pushed down into this zone, we've been consolidating, and you can see this consolidation zone very very clearly here on the on the four hour. And what do we know about these zones? Again, we have um, when we have these zones of consolidation, we know that there's patterns. Yeah, Ian says it. There's a, a very high probability that we're going to see these patterns form. Remember what I said, it's like 70 to 80% of the time we're in some form of consolidation on these markets. So it makes sense to have a ranging strategy or a, or a consolidation strategy in your arsenal, in your toolbox. And uh, we know we've got a high probability of spotting them. We had our cipher pattern here, which managed to be a, an extremely profitable trade for many of you. Um, perfect textbook cipher pattern there. And we've had a couple of other patterns in here, but essentially we're just looking for patterns. And we can see a lovely impulse leg here. Um, and if you don't know the difference between an impulse leg and an anchor leg, uh, they are the same thing when it comes to patterns. They're the sore thumb X to A leg, but they just got different, slightly different rules. Uh, an impulse leg breaks structure, and an anchor leg doesn't break structure. That's the only difference. Uh, but you can see we've got a nice X a B leg for a Gartley pattern. We've pushed right up into that 618, so it'll be a nice deep Gartley pattern should this uh, carry on and consolidate and complete. So we've got our eyes on it already. We're ahead of the game. We've identified consolidation. We've predicted further consolidation until we can continue uh, a directional movement. And until then, we're looking for patterns. Yeah, the Aussie CAD is pushing down now, so let's uh, let's get some orders on for this. E2 for my entries. Stops are going to be here if my uh, chart doesn't freeze. Sell stop. Stop loss is going to be here. Let's get this into the trade floor for the syndicate members. So you guys know that I'm looking to short this pair. Um, and the reason I'm looking to short this pair is because we violated that neck line of this head and shoulders. We had the head and shoulders pattern, had the neck line right here, and uh, we've, we've pushed down. Now the first aggressive head and shoulders entry will be at a test of this neckline. We haven't tested it yet, but obviously any, any reason to short this pair now is, is going to be uh, good for me, right? So although we haven't tested the neckline, and if we do push up to this level, if we do push up to this level, this will be my first aggressive short at this level. I'll need this neckline to be tested. I'll need to place my stops an ATR above the high of the close of the candle that tests it, as long as I get a one-to-one -one for a retest of these lows. Um, and that will be my first aggressive entry. However, uh, we're not pushing up there yet. We're not. We're not up at that level yet. If we do push up to this level, guys, even if you're more a conservative, it'd be a decent level to look for a double top entry. Get tight ATR stops above the high of the double top, and then a retest of the lows. Um, but until then, we haven't we haven't tested that level. But what we have had is our FTB candle, our good old trusted FTB. This was the <laughs> this was the one last week, guys. Well done, to everyone that caught this. All right, some of you caught this entire move down to, uh, I think it was this, you got stopped out on this candle here because you, some of you guys trail at 15 pips or 20 pips, I know, and uh, some of you caught this entire move, this would have been a 100 and 200 pip move, uh, well done, is all I can say, well done, there was a similar move on the pound dollar as well, uh, but we've just had another one, so this is our new FTB signal, hopefully we can just roll over again. And, uh, and capitalize again. All right, so this is the trade that I'm in. I obviously can't take anything else on this account at the moment, uh, but we will be looking for any other trading opportunities that may meet our rules down at this level. 
pattern trades on these lower time frames, um, you're going to see that we've got a bat pattern, uh, which is X, A, B, C, D. Now, the Euro Yen on the daily time frame, you can see we've put in this nice double top. So at this point here, I'm no longer looking, although we're, you know, it's quite obvious that this is a, a bullish trend, right, bullish trend, we're putting in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and then we hit this level, we found resistance here, just so happens to be previous, previous structure resistance, held that level, double topped at that level, and it became resistance. So at this point, I stop looking for a trend continuation move until we can put in a new high. Um, and what we've seen since then is we've, uh, from a trading perspective, we've rolled over, we've gone into this consolidation zone where we were looking for uh, pattern, pattern opportunities, pattern trades, and we're just in this consolidation zone now. So um, we're actually putting in this uh, descending channel as well. We've got some bullish divergence on the RSI. Typically we see a break to the upside here. Um, so any of you guys that trade these channels, you might be looking for that breakout to the upside uh, to, to get some profits off of that move. Um, but for me, we're just in this consolidation zone. If there's any patterns in this zone, then I'll take those. Uh, if not, then uh, there's not too much else that I'll be looking for on this pair. There's uh, it's just nothing on this pair that meets my own trade plan rules. On a day trading time frame, you can see that we've got uh, X to A, we've got X, A, B, C, D, 132.20 uh, for a back completion. So it looks like it's going to be another week of, uh, of patterns that we're looking at. 132.40 for your stop loss if you use a 113 inversion based stop and targets will be conventional only we'll be looking at conventional targets only at uh, the 382 and 618 retracements purely because it's consolidation it won't be I won't be looking for any extended moves or anything like that so there's a couple of a uh, couple of pattern trades setting up the Aussie CAD one hasn't filled yet the Aussie, what was the other one? Aussie, Aussie dollar hasn't filled yet. So, uh, and what was um, the pound dollar? Yeah, and, that, and that's about it at the moment. So the FTB is still shorting. Um, so another one on the Euro yen. All right, this is, remember this? This is what we did the, uh, I gave you guys uh, last week. I gave you guys some filters that you might use for a structure-based trade, and we was looking at double double bottoms, and I said, look, here's one. This was live in the market. We were probably trading around this level here, and I said, wait for RSI to go over oversold, wait for a double double bottom, which we actually got in the end, um, and then look for that bullish divergence, which we got, and then um, and then look at that. We we uh, we actually hit. Hit, not only hit targets, but we saw that reaction at that level. So if anyone monitored this, I did say keep an eye on this to see how it plays out. Um, you can see that's a, it's a filters, a couple of filters there can be very powerful when adding those to your structure-based trades. Because where this spurred from is someone was saying, oh, I've, you know, they were looking at every level of previous structure support and resistance. And I said, well, instead of doing that, you know, you're going to have very, you're going to have lots of opportunities, but you're going to have a low win rate. I said you want to take the higher quality trades, and you can simply take higher quality trades by just simply adding these few filters and uh, going to test that. And that's exactly what played out. We saw that we had uh, RSI go oversold. We had a double bottom. We had previous structure. We had the um, a valid double bottom. Had bullish divergence on the RSI on the second test equal tests of the lows and then we that that qualified for a valid double bottom and you can see we pushed up uh, pushed up and hit targets so this is the uh, this is the New Zealand dollar okay this is a level we've been looking at for a while we haven't broken close below the low we tested that previous structure support level that 6850 level 
where we were looking to get short down until where I said if we push down to 68.50 then I'll you know adapt my plan I won't be looking for any trend continuation trades anymore and we'll have to wait and see this will be a decision point we'll either hold this level and, and reverse or we'll put in a lower low lower close where I continue to look to get um, bearish but we had a lot of confluence down at this zone we had an equal measure of move down there we had some fib confluence as well down there 1618 extension down at that zone as well uh, let's remove this off okay we have 1618 extension down there we had an equal measure move we also had our back pattern a little bit higher we had a, a, a decent area down here a decent zone for a potential reaction and we've held that level as predicted we've held that level drop down to the trading time frame you can see we actually uh, started to run out of steam we had some divergence on the RSI and since we've retested we've just held that level so there's, this is a decision point for me there's nothing that I'm looking at that's going to allow me to take get long or get short at the moment we're going to have to wait for a break and close below this low if we break and close below this low I can then look for a pullback and then look to short by building out a kill zone and getting stops above this structure uh, level here or what we might see is if we hold and we start to reverse I'll look for that confirmed reversal before I look for a pullback and then look to buy this up so I know there's nothing on the 60 at the moment but if we drop down to the day trading time frames Already we're going to see we've got potential X, A, B, C, D, 68, 77, back pattern, nice looking back pattern in consolidation, stops above the high, 68, 88 for me, that 113 inversion, and then um, targets would be conventional so I'd be looking at targets being at 382 retracement 66 68 62 remember I'm not looking for a, a trend anymore I'm not looking for extended targets because we've got that indication that we've held that level of previous structure support so as a, as a, as a trader I'm adapting with price action I'm reading the chart the charts telling me a story it's my, I'm using my discretion to keep me out of those lower probability trades and uh, now I look for consolidation patterns on these lower time frames until we can get that direction of movement again like I say decision point we put in a new low I wait for a pullback and look to get short if we put in a reversal uh, and a confirmed trend reversal then I'll wait for a pullback and look to get long adapting is survival yeah same as any other business all right, so that was it. So you can see that it's uh, it's about showing up, being robotic, being consistent, having the discipline to remain consistent in your approach, going through your analysis regardless of what was going on. We did take a couple of trades in the end today, um, but you know markets consolidate. The the forex market is is prolific uh, for consolidation. It's, we're in some form of consolidation 70 to 80 percent of the time it typically moves sideways so that's why you can see these patterns are very very um very very powerful and you can you can generate a lot of profit from having a strategy that allows you to trade a ranging market so the importance of this video was just to really give you a real insight into what a day-to-day -day, uh, normal trading session looks like with not much going on because i think it's important to get that message out uh, especially for all of you new traders that think that you should be doing something otherwise you're not doing something right uh, there's been many a times when I just sit and you know there's nothing going on I'll sit playing my guitar and people will look at me like shouldn't you be doing something and I'm like no my hard work's done my hard work was in the form of hundreds of hours back testing um, doing my pre-market analysis my post-market analysis building that discretion going through my live analysis, identifying areas that I want to get involved in, and then just marking that on my chart and leaving it. That's my hard work. Uh, once you're in a trade, of course, all the hard work's been done. That's why you don't want to look at the trade when it's on. You just leave it, 
whether it wins or loses doesn't matter so i hope you enjoyed the video leave a comment below and uh, don't forget to share this as well i'm going to be putting out lots and lots of videos like this over the next uh, weeks and um, i really appreciate your comments and anything you want to know about in particular on trading i'll happily let you in and give you all of my insights so till next time guys take care and i'll see you then